Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Raw Report. I am your Royal 2 IC. And, uh, you know, actually, I think a lot of you have seen that I have been uh, playing around with uh, doing different intros, just having a little bit of fun. I am not in any foreseeable future going to get rid of what you just watched of the uh, intro for me. There's a lot of meaning behind it and different other things. Uh, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, just having a little bit of fun. But uh, speaking of a little bit of fun, uh, I am going to bring you today's uh, daily headlines report. And so with that, let me introduce you to another one of these having fun moments. There you go. Okay, that's probably the only time you'll see that unless I just happen to kick it up just for some, some good times and some fun. All right. So uh, before I get into this one, I actually was listening to a podcast this morning while I was doing some work. And uh, they were talking about having a global war. What's the odds of you know World War Three happening? Uh, different things like that. And somebody brought up a great point in this kind of like a roundtable discussion. Where they said, well, what constitutes it officially being World War? And I immediately, I mean, I was working hard, writing, typing, doing different things. And I just stopped and I, I, I don't know. And uh, they didn't know. They couldn't answer it. So I immediately went to the internet and I typed it in. And uh, <laughs> there's nothing out there. I don't know if it's been blocked, censored, or if there just technically isn't anything. Uh, let me put up what I did find. So right here is about the best one that I could find. Now, uh, summarizing this, you can read it all right there. But summarizing this, it says that for it to be a major, like a world war, it needs to meet three criteria. One of which, it needs to be a conflict of multiple nations around the world. Okay. Two, it needs to be fought in different locations around the world. Okay, fair enough. And three, it must be fought against great powers. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I will agree with that. That seems like a, a fair assessment. So where are we at now with all the conflict and everything going on around in the world? Uh, you know, how close are we? Let me put it in perspective for you. So look at this picture right here. Now, if you can look at this, every country in red, okay, has either A, done something militarily to another country, or has had something military done to that country since January 1st of this year. So we just went through and read off the three criteria. Are we there yet? I'll let you make up your own mind in that one. Uh, all right, let's jump into this. So we uh, talked about the uh, Iran and Pakistan last night, and uh, well, Pakistan did retaliate last night, so Pakistan uh, launched a series of missiles, airstrikes, and drones against the IRGC. Uh, I believe this is the first time any country has successfully launched anything into the country of Iran since like the mid-1980s, <laughs> so uh, I mean, you're talking like what? 40 years ago almost so um now these strikes hit three different areas inside of the country uh seven of them were said to be ballistic missiles uh, the interesting part is that the report uh that i was getting a lot of this information from said that there was no iranian air defense system that was activated at the time Thus, there was no interceptions, so whatever was launched across border went in unimpeded, so interesting data point. Uh, now, the IRGC has uh, basically put all their people, they've, they've heightened their military, they've moved a bunch of different military troops and equipment down to the uh, southeastern uh, portion, basically right there on the border with Pakistan, so they're gearing up. There's a lot of pictures and videos saying Pakistan's doing the same thing. So data point, just something to kind of keep an eye on, see what's going on down there. 
Um, now, the U.S. and the U.K. did launch a new airstrike last night also in Yemen. Uh, again, they're trying to uh, officially, from what they're saying, go after these anti-ship launching uh, locations. Um, I, I, I don't know really what quite to say about that. Honestly, if, if they wanted to, uh, that should have been done a long time ago. But, um, okay, we'll, we'll just data point that one. Uh, so what is everybody doing about it? Well, NATO came out with an announcement today saying that they are going to gear up for a new exercise. They're dubbing this one Steadfast Defender. Uh, this is going to be slated to begin sometime in February. This is going to be the largest NATO exercise since the Cold War. And this is set to include 90,000 troops. Now, this is supposed to be a uh, way to gear up in a uh, cooler weather environment for a multinational uh, joint uh, response, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, and basically, what it boils down to, if you can kind of read between the lines, is that uh, they're saying, hey, if Russia you know, decides to attack, we need to train for it, so... This is supposedly their answer. I don't know. Again, your guess is as good as mine. You know, is this a, a way that they can go, hey, we're just training. We're just pulling all these people right up to your border, but don't mind us. We're, it's just a training exercise. When in that fact, it's actually NATO's way of putting everything right where they need to and then go, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go ahead and attack. So uh, just, just keep it in mind. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but... Uh, the opportunity is there if they so deem it. Um, speaking of which, the cry or the one of the biggest uh, cities in Crimea, uh, Sevastopol, was hit with a blackout. Uh, pictures and videos all over social media about that. Um, there was also reports that uh, they were saying leaked reports that um, the U.S. has quietly been. Uh, formulating a plan with Ukraine to go take out the Crimean Bridge. Uh, that would be a bad idea, but uh, again, just we'll wait and see. I, I hate when they, hey, it's a leaked document sort of thing, but uh, we'll find out if it's true or not soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, now there is reports coming out that the, um, the large part of northern Gaza has fallen away from Israeli control and is uh, allegedly under full control of Hamas. Um, there's all sorts of rumors floating around about this that uh, Israel's attention has turned and uh, you know Hamas just took advantage and went in and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of people there so it didn't actually do a whole lot or didn't need to do a whole lot in order to take control of it. Uh, I don't know. Again, you're going to have things from both sides on, yes, it happened. No, it didn't happen. So uh, just data point it and we'll find out, you know, as things come about in the future. Now, this one was interesting. So Norway has told its citizens in a, in a statement, this is, comes from their uh, Minister of Defense, that on January 19th, so tomorrow, that a digital message is going to go out to all the citizens. And uh, basically in this message, it could be asking some of these citizens to contribute uh, vehicles and other resources for national preparedness. Now they're saying that they could ask for these vehicles or, or other resources for up to one year with the, uh, it might be extended sort of thing as a, uh, as a as needed basis, I guess is what you can say on that. So uh, it looks like Norway is doing the same thing with like Sweden and everything else that they're they're getting their population all kind of ramped up, going, hey, uh, there might be a conflict coming soon. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Norway responds over the next couple of days to this announcement, and maybe we'll get a glimpse on what these messages actually say as they get started to uh, share across social media and other things. I'm sure that'll come out. Next, it uh, looks like Jordan has launched uh, some airstrikes into Syria. Uh, one of these airstrikes actually killed 11 people. So, uh, again, now we're getting more and more people involved. Uh, half of Poland was left with no GPS. And this was reported by Cyber Defender 24. 
And uh, what they're saying in their report is that uh, this is the consequences of a Russian uh, electronic warfare in uh, Kaliningrad. So uh, there's a lot of things, again, spread about this. You know, is it something that Russia's gearing up for? Was it a test? Was it, you know, this, that, whatever? I don't know. Uh, you know, you, sometimes the, these things, you just got to take it for face value and go, okay, what happened? Well, GPS went down. Okay, everybody agrees on that part. Now, you know, why did it happen? Who was it? You, you just got to do your own research and, and try and come up with your own conclusion on that one. Uh, looks like um, Iranian militants have, uh, well, they, they came out and first it was, they did it, and then it all of a sudden went to a bunch of people saying it didn't happen, and then all of a sudden uh, everybody came to an agreement it did happen. So uh, Iranian militants successfully shot down an American MQ-9 Reaper drone. This was a reconnaissance drone. Uh, flew out, was over... Um, an area and then uh, shot down. Uh, now the big rumors are who got to the wreckage because there is both videos of Americans flying out there very quickly trying to get it and these militants walking around a thing. So whose video is real? I don't know. Uh, but it looks like this is 100% this happened. So uh, data point that one. Next, it looks like the European Parliament has uh, passed a way to have tougher measures, if you will. And this is supposedly to help with money laundering. Um, and basically what this is, is that they are now no longer allowing people to make cash payments over 10,000 euros. Now, if this doesn't scream the, hey, we need to bring on uh, CBDC, digital currency, because they're not saying anything about, hey, I need to buy this $50,000 or $500,000 or whatever, uh, you know, yacht, plane, this, that, whatever. They said cash. That's what this whole bill is about. It's about cash. So keep that in mind, because uh, if this goes over without a whole bunch of pushback then this could spread and and it could be a really big stepping stone into uh, a cbdc all right so let's move into the homeland so cnn's new chief executive is reportedly seriously thinking about starting to charge people to watch its news clips if they are trying to watch them from a mobile device. Now, they said that they are uh, thinking about this because of the decrease in cable news. Now, I don't know if it's because it's cable news or if it's because it's CNN. Uh, you know, there's, there's multiple different reasons. Yes, I get it. It's a bunch of people are, are streaming different things. A bunch of people are, are trying to find different media outlets, different news sources, you know, things like what I'm doing right here. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens if they pull the trigger and go through with that one. So, uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, next, there are videos coming out all over social media that is now starting to show Texas state troopers as they begin making arrest of illegal border crossers in Eagle Pass, Texas. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, it looks like the way that everything's going on down there, that Texas is stepping up and, and they're winning. Um, hopefully more and more of those videos start coming out. Hopefully that's going to be maybe like a rally cry that more states get involved and start sending help down there. And uh, maybe that's what you know we need to do is, uh, you know, as states, we help each other. Uh, just the same thing as having a prepper network we can have a state network and you know all it's going to do is just take one state hey what do you need you need us to come you know send some boots on the ground send some uh, supplies whatever and then others start following and then you know we all just come together and go no if, if you're not going to do your job and close the border we as a state we're going to go in and we're going to do it so hopefully this is the start of something Next, um, 
this one's a little interesting. So the executive director of an organization called the Rainbow Resource Center. If you don't know what that is, I don't blame you. I didn't know what it is either. Uh, this is one of those LBG, uh, QT, whatever thingies. Uh, they're, they're out of California. Well, this executive director was arrested. Now, can you guess why they were arrested? Well, if you have no idea, it is because they were caught in a catch-a-predator sting. Okay, well, maybe some of you are a little surprised. Probably most of you are not. Well, maybe here might be the little head scratch or surprise on this. So the group came out after this allegation and arrest and all that. And their statement was that this alleged crime was done on personal time and was not done on any of the organization's computers. So I, I guess it's okay, you know. I, I don't know what that even means, but uh, they, they felt the need to make that as a public statement. <sighs> yeah, interesting times that we live in. Uh, next, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's mainstream, so I'm sure a lot of you have, but Congress has officially sent a stopgap bill to the White House for a temporary uh, avoidance of a government shutdown. Uh, again, we're, we're just kicking the can down the road. Um, I, I don't know what this means for the Speaker of the House. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've been seeing all over social media, he's, he's going to get McCarthy'd. Uh, which is quite clever, but, you know, it, this can't keep going. You know, we, we're already way into the hole. We are $34.05 trillion into the hole. Um, they just want to keep going and going and going. There's a whole bunch I could have talked about on Congress. Uh, the Jamal, whatever, I forget. I, I don't know the, the Congress people's names, and nor do I care to. But uh, one came up with a way to do reparations payments by saying uh, we can come up with the money the way that we did with the uh, CV one niner, and we just print a whole bunch and hand it out, um, and that's just ridiculous. Uh, the other one said that um, they want to introduce a uh, bill to uh, remove the Statue of Liberty. I I don't know. Uh, I mean. Yeah, and, and we could talk a whole bunch about that, but there's a bunch of people that's already talked about it. Uh, I know Pinball's talked about some of that and some other ones. Um, we're just going to leave that one alone, at least for now. Now, there is one thing that I wanted to, to put out before I wrap up. Um, this channel is for the new prepared. You know, if, you, if you're thinking about it, if you just started out, if you're just starting out, uh, this is for the person that hasn't quite started or the person that's only been in it a day, a week, a month, things like that. One of the biggest things that I try to push to where I'm separate from all the other channels is that I want to bring you an idea. I want to get you motivated. I want to get you to that point to where here is the thing you figured out for you. Now you can either take it and go, uh, this doesn't apply to me and push it off completely fine. You can take it and look at it and go, you know what? This is interesting. I need to look into it further. Perfect. Or I want to try this out, you know, see if it works for me. Excellent. That's all the things I actually want from this. If it doesn't apply to you, move on. No hard feelings. If you want to, I want to bring the idea. I want you to make your own choice. I want you to come up with your own opinion. I want you to figure out, do I want to try this? Is it a good idea? And maybe it, it is a good idea, but the way I showed you, you need to modify it so it works for you. We're all different. Everybody has a different situation. We're all at different points in our life. We're at different points in our preparedness. And so all I want to do is bring that motivation, and I want to bring that thought, that idea, and hand it to you. You figure out what you want to do with it. That choice is yours. This is where this comes in. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. So let me show you a picture of an actual Washington Post headline. Okay. So right here, this official Washington Post headline, as you can read, okay, 
doing your own research is a good way to end up being wrong. Yeah, yeah, that actually said that they released that. And they, were, they weren't just the only ones. There was other ones that said very, very similar things all on the same day, almost at the same time. Isn't that just weird? So for me, uh, no, 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 no. You need to figure out what's going on. You do your own research. If I read something about uh, Pakistan and Iran, and you're like, wow, that's interesting. Well, I brought it to you. You can go do your research. I don't want to tell you what to think about it. Yeah, I might pop in and share what my take is on it, but that's just to get you to think. I'm not sitting here saying you have to be on A side or B side or the green side or the purple side or that is your decision. I'm just bringing you the headlines. I'm bringing you the ideas. You figure out what you want to do. This channel is all about doing your own research. And I will continue to push that because that's the most important part. This country is about freedom. And that freedom is for you to make up your mind. If you are on here, if you're a new member, welcome. You know, I, I love having you guys. We all hang out on the workshop Wednesdays. We all have fun, which uh, last night was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, we, we all just build a community. And it's one of those ones. If you are here, if this is your first time or, or you know, you've only watched an episode or two, uh, if you are looking for somebody that you can click play and then tell you exactly what to do, you're on the wrong channel. That's not going to be me. I will try my best to inspire you. I will try my best to bring you some motivation, but the rest is up to you. You know, when SHTF happens, I'm not going to be there to hold your hand. I'm not going to be there doing everything for you, telling you what to do, what to think, how to act, all that. Mine is, hey, there might be an event coming. Maybe you should do something about it. The rest is up to you. You got to figure it out. Well, what is that event? I don't know. It could be this or it could be this. What applies to you? Well, what do I do about it? Well, here's, you know, a couple of things, maybe some food, some water, some medical. Okay, that's a great idea. So, so what specifically? Well, you know, try looking at this or looking at that. I am never going to say you have to buy this specific brand of flashlight or you have to spend X amount of dollars on a knife or You've come to the wrong channel. Not going to happen. So, all right. Uh, Video is long enough. That's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys got a little something out of it. Got a little preachy there at the end, but I get passionate about this stuff because uh, as much as I like to have fun and come on here and laugh and joke, um, it, it comes down to a point that as much as we try our best to hope for the best. There is a real possibility. If there wasn't a real possibility, none of us would be prepping. So since we are trying to be, you know, prepared for whatever's going to happen, that means that there is a pretty decent chance that there's something to prepare for. That means that this could come down to life or death. And so uh, as much as I love to joke, I've also got to make sure that I take the responsibility of being serious into it and try and make sure that I deliver as best as I can to where as many people can get something out of it as possible. So there we go. So here we go. Here's the wrapping uh, end of everything on this. So if you made it to this far in the video, guess what? You rock. You guys are amazing. I uh, love each and every one of you. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for a little bit on your Thursday. Uh, I get so much positive feedback and everything. You guys are, are you're amazing. I don't know what else to tell you guys. So there we go. Uh, stay tuned. There's definitely, definitely more information to come. Say it with me now. Above everything else, remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.